what your pastor didn't tell you was, I give out scholarships for students to buy their textbooks when they go to college. You keep those grades up. You look me up. And you got to apply. It is a process. Okay? So you got to get recommendation letters, your transcript, write an essay. You do have to go through the process. But you keep those grades up, sweetheart, and I will buy your book for your first year college. Come here. between forgiveness and healing. Amen? Amen. Amen? And you may say, oh, I forgive easily. Somebody mess around with me, I let it roll off my back. Hmm. That might be you. This sermon might not be for you. But I was the one that struggled when it came to forgiving other people. Because I love hard. When I tell you I love you, I truly love you. But the minute you cross me, baby, it takes me a minute to turn that corner and our relationship is back the same. Amen? You may say, oh, I don't need healing. I'm perfectly fine. Well, this message is not for you. But I want you to look at the word healing in seven different areas. A spiritual healing where you're overcoming a broken spirit. Amen. Physical healing, which all of us automatically think about. Our achy knees, our achy backs, and and things like that. When we say healing, we automatically think of a physical healing. But I want you to also think of a financial healing. You may need a financial breakthrough. If I was to poll this congregation right now, and I said, what's your credit score? Come on now. About 40% or less of us will be able to answer that question. Come on now. Because we don't take our finances as seriously Teach. as we should. Right. Amen? Right. Amen. Yes. And I want to give you an example. I made a commitment at the end of last year mm-hmm. that 2015, I was not going to operate the same way when it came to my finances. Uh-huh. Talked to my husband about it. Pulled, when we pulled our credit report before we got married. Because that's serious, okay? So it wasn't just, no, oh, the ring is pretty, ooh, ooh. Oh, no, no, no. Part of this is business, amen? Oh, yeah. So we, we pulled medical reports, we pulled credit reports. We, we did a lot, okay? Because I don't want, I didn't want to go into it with any surprises, amen? So I pulled the credit report again recently, 
And I said, I need to start paying some of this stuff off. Yeah. Instead of just a minimal balance, you know, that you paying off, I wanted to be able to start chipping away at my debt. Yeah. Because I'm a firm believer Go ahead, tell it. that when we're paying all of this money in excess of um, uh, uh, rates when it comes to what we're trying to purchase. We are living in modern day slavery. Anytime you have to pay, here's an example, $250 for a vehicle that you want to lease and somebody with good credit can pay $99, we off track somewhere. So when I say healing, I've given you three already. A spiritual healing, physical healing, financial healing, and emotional healing is another. Anytime somebody says good morning to you, and you say, what's so good about it? You need emotional healing. Amen. You need emotional healing. Amen. Mental healing. We got to get our minds right. Scripture tells us to renew our minds. Amen. 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 The next one is a career healing. Somebody is working a dead-end job right now. And instead of a job, you need to have a career. Anytime you hit your alarm clock three, four, five, six times, you don't want to get up and go to work. Amen. So you need some healing on your job. Amen. And the last one is community healing. Our communities are suffering. God may have a mandate on your life to go out in these communities and touch them. We need some healing in our community. Amen. So I've given you seven. I don't expect you to work on all seven because we may be okay in certain areas more than others. But as I'm delivering this message, I want you to take one of the seven and make a commitment. For the rest of this year, you are not going to be in bondage in that area anymore. And the area is your choice. Amen? That's going to be between you and God. Or if you're married, between you and your mate. Amen? You, your mate, and God. So I'll review those seven again. Spiritual healing, physical healing, financial healing, emotional healing, mental healing, career healing, Community healing. Amen. Just pick one. You don't have to do all seven because that may overwhelm you. You might collapse. Okay. Once you think about everything you got to do, but just pick one. Pick one and make a commitment for the rest of the year that when you start 2016, you're not going to be in the same place again. Amen. 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 So going back to how healing is connected to our forgiveness, I want to look at three areas of forgiveness. Forgiving others, forgiving ourselves, and God forgiving us. Amen. 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 Forgiving others, forgiving ourselves, and God forgiving us. Right. Because oftentimes, we don't forgive each other the way that we should. We hold on to things that we've done as far as bad decisions, so we haven't really forgiven ourselves for things that we've done or allowed to happen in our families or in our lives. But we always want God to forgive us, right? But we have to see how all those are connected. They're all connected. Amen? Let's look at our foundation scripture, which is Matthew 6. 14 and 15, Matthew 6, 14 and 15. And it reads, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive their trespasses. Forgive your trespasses. Amen. Amen. So we have to make sure that we find healing in our souls and accept that when we are forgiving other people. Amen. Forgiving is the only way to end, to bring an end to a situation. Uh-huh. And too often we've heard people say they don't deserve to be forgiven. Uh-huh. Or we hear people say they haven't even acknowledged that they did me wrong. Yeah. But that's not in scripture. 
That's not in scripture. So we pick up things that the world tells us and we try and apply it to our lives, which is completely contrary to scripture. God never said that those excuses, they never acknowledged. They did me so wrong. He didn't require that as prerequisites to us forgiving them. He simply said, if you forgive your fellow man, I will forgive you. Amen. 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 So other people's actions should not make a difference in our healing. We shouldn't allow what they do to impact our healing. Because we deserve freedom. Amen. 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 If I said who all wants to be free, everybody's hand is going to go up. Amen. But what are we doing to ensure that we have that freedom? To ensure that we have that healing? And the only way to be free is to forgive. Amen. That's one of the ways that we can be free. Amen. Hallelujah. And even though you have people that are involved that you deem may not deserve forgiveness, we deserve to be free from that hurt. Amen. We need to Amen. be free from that pain. Amen. So here's an example. If you were ever abused as a child, uh-huh. the abuser may never acknowledge what they've done to you. Uh-huh. Amen? Amen. And what I didn't realize was I was molested as a child. Mm -hmm. I suppressed that thing for over 30 years. And one day I was in church and I started to see things that were happening in my family. Mm -hmm. And although I don't believe in generational curses, Uh I do believe in generational tendencies. We have tendencies to do certain things because we saw it done in our families. We have tendencies to do certain things because we've heard about it or witnessed it. And I suppressed that thing, and I started seeing this thing happen in my family, and I said, we got to break this thing. We have to break this. Because it was so much going on sexually in my family where you had premarital sex going on. Uh You had relationships that were not healthy. Uh And it was all as a result of us not coming together, Mm -hmm. being honest with each other as a family, and casting out that thing that once happened. Uh Amen. So we have to be bold enough to address those types of things that are happening. Amen. 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 Here's another example. Someone took $50,000 from me. Yeah, I had to forgive. No, was it easy? No. Absolutely not. Oh no. Here's another example. Someone took me to court. I know, and it was about my property, but they took me to court. And I told you about the molestation. Yeah. All of this are from family members. Now, I'm not here to air our dirty laundry, especially since they record. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) However, I'm here to set somebody else free. Here's another example. Someone was stalking me, and it wasn't a man. There was someone who wanted my life. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, you, you you may not want this. You may not. I got to get up at a quarter to four, I mean quarter to five every morning. I got to stay up late at night. I'm working on a PhD. You may not want this because you don't know what all that it takes to get through what I got to get through, okay? I got a big old husband over there I got to take care of. You know what I mean? You may not necessarily want this, but this woman wanted my life. And I didn't know exactly who it was. And I'm not 100% sure, but I'm very close to figuring out who it was. Mm -hmm. This happened, oh, it's been going on for 11 years. I went to the police. I changed my number. I went to another county in the police station, changed my number again. Because I'm trying to figure out, like, what's going on? But I knew that I had to forgive. One of my girlfriends said, oh, you really trying to get to heaven, huh? <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm y'all, you know, yeah, that's the yeah, goal, right? right. Yeah, yeah. But her point was, once I knew, or once I found out, it's no way in the world I would be forgiving her. 